Hi, and welcome back to the Low Level Devil Channel's OS development using the Linux kernel series. If you haven't seen the previous video, there's a link to the playlist in the description. In the previous video, we covered how to use a dynamic library to create some shared functions. In this video, I want to show you how to execute a process, and we'll start by creating our own little shell, which we'll call Lash, short for Lame Shell, because it doesn't really have much functionality. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the previous video is that in order for this to work, in order for the, the uh, dynamic library linking to work, you need to copy over the dynamic loader library into your OS's lib64 directory. And you'll find that in your lib64 uh, slash lib64 directory of your host machine. So now let's take a look. Go into your shell and you can look in the uh, lib64 directory for ld-linux. There should be something that starts with that. What you see right here we have that. So what we need to do is just copy that file over into the myOS directories lib64 and copy it. And that's really all that you need to do. So now let's look and make sure it's there. This library is used to link dynamic executables. So now let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is just create a new folder in here for our, uh, our new application, which we're going to call Lash. And we're going to start with a make file. We'll just copy it from init and we'll have a lash.c. It'll be a really simple application. So in the make file, we want to make the target name lash and we want to change the bin directory. So I'll take the one from my lib that has a custom one. I'll paste it in here and just change it to We'll just call it user slash bin. All right, now let's go into the Lash program. First, we need to start including the lib, my lib, and then we'll do the FCNTL. And we're also going to include time.h because we need to do some nano sleeps in here. And, uh, Let's create a uh, variable for our file descriptor for the dev console. And actually, first let's take this nano sleep function. I'd never put that in the uh, my lib header yet, so I'm going to go ahead and paste it up in there. And let's go back to lash.c. So now the first thing we'll need to do is initialize the console. So we're going to create a function called console open. And what that's going to do is use the sysopen function to open slash dev slash console. And we're going to use make it read write. Now the dev console is another way you can use the uh, std in and std out, but it's a little more functional. So let's go uh, create another function here, console read, to read a character from the console. And to do this, all we really need to do is, let's create a character here, initialize it to zero. So we need to loop while we're reading. So for sysread, we're going to we're going to loop on that console FD, reading that one character. And the reason we're doing this is because it's not going to block while there's no input. So we're just going to, while there's no input, what we're going to do is simply sleep for 10,000 nanoseconds. So in order to uh, not have to just keep recalling in an infinite loop with no kind of waiting in the process. We're going to just sleep for 10,000 nanoseconds while we're reading and there's no input. Now for console write, that's going to be a lot easier because we're only going to call that when we actually want to write. So we're just going to call syswrite the character n1. 
Now keep in mind it's the address of the character, not the character itself. All right, so I guess now we can start with a read line function. This is going to be a simple one that will take in a buffer and then the max size of the buffer. So we'll start with index of zero. Loop while we haven't reached the maximum size. So now we'll create a character here and we'll say console.read. Now just in case this returns a zero, what we're going to do is just do i minus minus and continue. So now we're going to want to write this back to the console. Because when you type you want to see what you're typing. And we're going to set the character in the buffer at that index. And um, let's see if there's a backspace. We're going to want to I minus minus and set that last character to zero. And if we hit a return, then we're at the end of the line. So we're going to set that current character to zero, the null pointer, and null terminator, that is, and return the index. And then at the very end, we return the index as well. And one thing I'll mention, in order to keep these videos short, I'm not doing a lot of bounds checking and error checking, so in a, in a real program you're going to want to do all that. So let's move on to our main. The first thing we're going to do in main is clear the screen. So we're sending some, a, a terminal command, which you can just copy from here. This is just tells the terminal to clear the screen and return to the top. So then we're going to print out lash version 0.0.0.1. So then we'll print a little prompt here. All right, so now we're going to want to open the console and then create an infinite loop. Create a, puff, a buffer, I think 1K of characters is enough. So I'm going to use the read line function to read read one line. We're going to print out the input. And again keep in mind you'd want to check the return value of that read line normally but we're just trying to keep things short here. So now we're going to use a new function, stir eq, to check if the stir is equal to reboot. And I'll create that function shortly. So then we'll just print out a message saying system rebooting. And we'll call sys reboot. And um, well, for now we'll just keep it as is. That's, that's going to be the only command. Other than that, it's just going to echo back what you typed for our first version of it. So now we'll print the prompt again. And I think that should do it. So now we can go and create these functions. This stir eq, syswrite, and there's a couple more sys, sys calls that we're going to need to create in order to execute this. So we'll go into our sys.c. Down at the bottom, we'll create our unsigned long sysWrite. Now we've already used this in our stir print function, so it's fairly straightforward. You take the file descriptor, the buffer, and the length. And simply return syscall is right. And then zero for the rest of the fields. Now for fork, let's go back over to the Linux syscall table. Gotta go to Google first. So Linux syscall table, if you remember, there was a good lookup table here from the Chromium Google source. 
just go back to that. The x86-64. We can look down here. Actually, we'll just find fork. There you go. And fork's easy. It takes no parameters. Just returns the process ID. And now exec-ve is the one that will take in the file name, argv, and envp. The same that you usually pass into your int mains. So let's go back to the source. Let's create some simple syscalls for those. Actually, this is going to be a long because it can return negative. So sys fork, no arguments, and we simply return the syscall sys fork with no arguments. That was easy. Now we'll use the exec ve, which will also be a long return, exec ve. And remember this is going to take in the file name of the executable that you want to execute, the arguments, and the environments. And it's just going to return the syscall sys exec ve. Exec ve, yep. So, and then, of course, the file name, the arguments, and the environments. And zero for everything else. Let's see, now we're ready for the. We'll create a, another function here called execute process, just a helper function that just passes in a file name of what you want to execute. So we're, first we're going to get the process ID from fork. If it's zero, then we're in our new process. So we're going to grab that file name. Arguments, take two arguments, argv0 equals the file name so we really don't need this command variable and argv1 is going to be 0 because we're at the end of our arguments and for envp we're not really going to pass anything so we'll just make that a one element array we're still in the early stages here so we're just going to return sys exec ve with the file name, the arguments, and the environments. And that should do it for the syscalls. Now we'll move on to the utility. There's just one function that we wanted to create. This is, again, a simple a stir equals function that doesn't have any bounds checking or, or anything like that. So you would want to create a more advanced one for a real OS but I'm just going to create a really small one. This is the super simple implementation of stir equal. Grab the character from A and B, the first character, and we'll keep incrementing A and B, getting the next character. And if for some reason those characters are not equal, then the string is not equal. And at the end, we'll just return is the character equal to that character. So, super simple string and string equals implementation. All right, so we'll put that in the header with extern, and we'll take these syscalls as well, and our helper function. Extern in front of each of them. So now we should be ready to go and move on to the init. So for our init function, our init uh, application, first we want to increment the version. We're now in version 0.0.0.2. .0 .0 .0 .0 so 
let's first remove all this extra stuff where we are printing out a file and all we're really going to do here is say execute process and we want to execute bin lash so let's change our loop function at the end we don't really want to do these ticks anymore we want an infinite loop and we'll just sleep one second in that infinite loop and we don't need to reboot at the end so we now have the reboot command alright so save our lash.c let's open up a terminal okay go into the source my lib make clean and now let's do make oh, there is one error let's take a look at this error sys nano sleep Get sys nano sleep. Did we, did we put it in? Yeah, we did put it in there already. Okay, time spec. It's having an issue finding this time spec value. Oh, let's see. Everything is typed here correctly. Okay, and it's in here. And we're passing in the pointer to our and the value looks correct everything looks right there one more look okay I see what the problem is here we just have to let, let's go to the that time dot H that we included up here we'll just remove that from the headers from the source files and we'll put it over here in the header because the header is not able to find that struct so we'll make clean make there you go I'm just gonna ignore these warnings they're not important and we'll make install so now let's go to flash make and sudo make install and what's we cannot create regular file user bin okay let's make that directory okay dash p will create any subdirectories all right so make install and go to init also we'll make and make and sudo make install that should be it oh actually there's one thing I messed up here <laughs> let's go back to the uh, make file it shouldn't be user bin it should just be slash bin that's why I got that error when making the directory so let's go back and clean it and make it again and sudo make install all right, so now we're ready to reboot. So let's just sudo reboot. All right, we'll choose my OS. And let me drag the window here, make it a little bigger. And there we go, it executed lash 0 .0 0.0.0.1. You can just type some text, you can backspace. Testing one, two, three. You can see it's echoing our input here, whatever you want to type. And the, the advantages in dev consoles, you can easily backspace and it'll take care of all that on the view for you. So now let's just reboot and we're done. So I think that's a good stopping point. We added a few new syscalls, learn how to spawn a new process and create a simple shell for our OS. In the next video, I want to show you how to allocate some memory. Remember that since we don't have libc, we don't have access to functions like malloc. So we'll have to allocate memory for the application ourselves. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, comment with any questions or suggestions you have, and thanks for watching.